Hello and welcome to our first summer writing. Um, today I just wanted to introduce you guys to journaling. I have been keeping a diary for some time and these are all of my diaries or journals that, that I wanted to um, show you. And I know you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, Mrs. Donahue, you have clearly been keeping journals since you were a child. No, actually, I think the latest journal goes back uh, about 10 years at, at the absolute most. Um, yeah, uh, 2004. Here is the very first one that I did, and it's 2004. So I only started about 10 years ago, um, and and I, I got into it, and I decided that I was going to make it a habit, and I kept all of them. Um, I don't I don't go back and read them because that's weird. You don't need to do that. Um, but I I keep I keep journals, and the reason that I do this is not because I think my thoughts are so terribly important that they must be jotted down and kept in some Hawthornian like state. No, it's a good habit to get into the idea of writing on a daily basis. And the reason that you journal is not so that you can, you know, keep all of your thoughts, because the reality is when you're eight and you're writing your diary, it's pretty much like, Dear Diary, I like My Little Ponies. My Little Ponies are cool. But there, you need to get to writing on a regular basis, and that's what all of these do. And I have a couple of techniques that I'd like to share with you to help you get into the idea of diary writing or journaling. The first thing I do is I, I will find a journal that I like. So I obviously like traditional black journals, and I evidently like it when they say journal write on them, and, and I, I will write in them. Um, I do try to write in them on a daily basis, and if I miss a day, then I have to be okay with that, and if I, you know, write three or four times in one day, I have to be okay with that too. Um, another thing that I'm doing is I'm practicing my longhand. Um, writing in longhand is different than writing in print. When you write in longhand, you have to, it's cursive here in this country, you have to be more aware of the shape of the words. You have to slow yourself down a little bit because most Americans are not used to writing in cursive. Most of us are, are actually at this point probably used to banging on keys. Um, so when I write in longhand, I am thinking more clearly about the sentences and about the shape of the letters and the words. And there just seems to be a little bit more of a cognitive kind of effect going on in my head, all the way down through my shoulder, to my arm, to my elbow, to my hand, and then finally to the page, as opposed to just typing. Um, so there's good and bad. Um, in my journal, I also keep just, you know, tokens. This this was actually an invitation to my brother's wedding. Um, you know, tickets, uh, ticket stubs, um, receipts to things that I thought were fun, baseball games, anything like that. It doesn't have to be a big you know, thought-provoking, highfalutin kind of thing. It could just be like, today I went to the Red Sox, here is the stub, yay! Um, so I have I have different journals, they are covered in dust. It shows you that I don't go back and, and read them. Um, and I keep them all in one place so that I, I have them. And the only reason I want to keep them is I want to show myself, like, you did do this, you did write every day. See how much you filled these silly things up? This is the most recent. I also keep additional ones for when I travel. This is when I went to Washington, D.C., and it's not only full of just all of my writings and everything that I thought while I was in D.C. It's every single picture that I took and a bunch of magazines cut up and tickets that we went to. And that's that's just kind of a, a fun idea that used to be done a lot during the Victorian and the Edwardian era. There was no travel literature written at that time other than travel journals that people kept. So I, I thought I'd follow in that tradition and keep a travel journal. Another thing I do to make sure that writing became a habit was that I gave myself a space to write in. And this, what you're looking at, is my space to write in. This is my desk. We're in my writing room. It's my upstairs study. Nobody bothers me in this room except for the cat who will probably come back and yell at me 15 more times. So I have my journal. I have my pen that I use. And I have my space. And my space is, there's nothing in here to distract me. I mean, there's a TV right there, but there's no cable. It's just for movies. I have my collection of Murder, She Wrote videos back there. I watch them. And the only thing in this room is just a lot of books you know, and just a lot of quiet. So this is also where I do all of my correcting for school, in case you kids are wondering. This is this is it, and I, I keep everything here. Um, the next thing I did was I made sure that my journals looked like what I wanted them to look like. So as opposed to, and I have seen lots of students do this, and with varying levels of success, 
as opposed to keep a notebook journal, which I, I can't do. This, this isn't appealing to me. It'll be fine as like notes for class, but thinking to myself, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to journal out every day in a notebook. I wouldn't feel professional enough. I would feel like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of like only doing this by halves. So I go to Barnes and Nobles and I buy a nice journal and I like owls. So this guy has a little owl on it and I like this journal and I only got it a, about a month ago and I'm already here. Um, I try to journal three pages a day. It's difficult, but I try even if I just write something like, you know, I am journaling three times a day. Here it is, you know, just, just got through watching Defiance. Oh my gosh, it's so dark. You know, um, when will George R.R. R. Martin get out the next Game of Thrones series? Hurry! Um, anything, anything like that. And the reason that I do that is if it's a habit that I'm trying to form, I need to make it as conducive to the habits that I already have. So I understand about myself that I like I like things to look a certain way. I like things to look like they fell out of a Wes Anderson film. I like things to look a little 1950s, a little polished, a little preppy. So I go out and I buy a journal like this. I will admit, I'm not sure what I was thinking when I bought this hideous thing. This this is not my taste at all. I hate the color yellow. I don't like any of these plants. Um, I'm actually terrified of plants because I get poison ivy and poison oak very easily. So I don't even like touching images of plants. Um, and there's there's that. Uh, and on my next journal for when I'm done with this is the TARDIS journal from Doctor Who. So I'm excited about that. And it makes me want to go back and write because I think to myself like, oh, I get to go see my little owly guy, you know, and it's hardcover and, and I get to sit down. And the third and final thing that I do to ensure that my journaling experience is, is fun, nice quiet room, nice book that I like. I have a pen that I enjoy. Now, I do journal in this in pencil or in a regular ballpoint pen sometimes, but I like to make a little bit of an affair out of it by using a fountain pen. And this is just a disposable fountain pen. You get them from Pilot, you know, probably three for $10 at any Staples. But it's just something that I like. So I have managed to make journaling a ritual. And because of that, it became very easy to make it a habit. Now, it's not important to journal for the sake of copying down your thoughts solely. It's important to journal because you want to get into the habit of writing on a daily basis. Writing on a daily basis is actually quite difficult. Think of anything else that you have to do on a daily basis that is outside of normal habit. Normal habit is you have to eat three times a day, you have to wash, you have to get up, you have to go to school, um, you got to brush your teeth. Those are all normal habit things that you just learn to do because you set them as a small child. And now you're taking something that as a teenager or for many of my other viewers as an adult you're trying to do. And this is really hard because as an adult it's really hard to set habits. So you need to make this habit as regular as possible. And within 20 days to 30 days, if you do stick with it, it will become something that is very simple to you. You will just know, okay, yeah, this is the time that I journal. Uh, another thing that helped me get into journaling on a daily basis is I got one of these little goofy Q&As. And this is wonderful because it's a question that you answer for the next five years of your life. And it's a commitment that you have to go to and be like, okay, I know that today is, yep, June 27th. It's Friday, and my question is, when was the last time you ate pizza? What kind? Two weeks ago. Cheese. So I hope that this has helped you out. Um, I'm going to be posting a lot of good writing advice. Um, stay tuned. Click like and subscribe if these helped you out. Send me advice if these don't help you out. Let me know how I can better help you, okay? So the lessons we learned today, writing on a daily basis is very important and there are three things you should do to ensure success of writing on a daily basis. One. You want to find a space where you will not be disturbed. Two, you want to find a medium to capture your thoughts in that you like and want to work with. And three, you want to find yourself a nice pen because you want to make sure that you're doing something that becomes fun. The other reason that writing uh, on a daily basis is important, and I did forget to mention this, is if you want to be a writer, it's essential that you understand yourself. Because writers who write well write stories that we can relate to very easily. Now, I'm a big fan of Stephen King's short stories. Nobody can relate to Quitter's Inc. because hopefully no one has actually been thrown into an electrically charged room with a, a floor that zaps you for smoking. 
but everyone can relate to being trapped in an addiction. It, everybody. I, I openly confess I am very addicted to candy and it's really hard for me to give up candy and soda because they're my trigger food. Other people have worse addictions and the struggle is really hard. So everybody can relate to this and the reason that Stephen King knew everybody could relate to this is because Stephen King himself struggled with addiction. So you want to find out who you are and the best way to do it is to spend time alone writing about yourself because when you do diary you are having a conversation with yourself. Not in a crazy person way talking to yourself in the car, but in a way that you're really trying to search out what makes me tick, what do I enjoy, what do I not enjoy, what would I like to communicate to my audience as a writer. So I hope any of this helped. Again, shoot me an email if you need any additional help. Shoot me another email if you want me to look at anything. I'm more than happy to. I'm just an English teacher from Massachusetts, hoping I can help. Okay, go write with your hands. I gotta think of a better sign off. That was a terrible sign off. I need to teach now. Okay, goodbye.